Hello, welcome to episode 347. We're going to be doing a potion of webs. Really, we're detecting where a potion's landing. You can do anything you like. I just thought I'd make it a bit more interesting and make a webby potion. So when you throw it potion, oh, you get some webs. Uh, they are randomized. So we can a diff bit different each time just to make it more interesting. You don't have to have as many. You can have less if you want. We're using a little counter system. Um, we're using spread players, and spread players likes to find the highest block. Uh, but we've taken that into account, so even if I throw it underneath here, there we go. It's still not teleporting up to the top. We're bringing them back down so it's in the right location. Uh, that's it, really. We are running a command where a potion lands, and the command I'm choosing to run is slap down a few cobwebs, which would be quite fun in a battle. Running away, run, run, run. Hey, have a potion of webs. Pretty cool. Okay. I keep that intro short. No waffling today. Let's get on and make it now. Okay, right. First thing we're going to need is a potion to throw. So let's uh, stick a block down and give ourselves a potion. Give potion. Okay, now if we use a lingering potion, they create area effect clouds. And there we go. We can target, we can target the cloud nice and easy. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to give... The nearest player, a lingering potion, and I'm going to give it a name as well. Why not display? In display, we'll have name, capital N, apostrophes, curly brackets, and we'll have some text. Uh, what should we call this? Uh, web, web bomb, web, web grenade, web grenade. Cool. Okay, and I'm going to give it a custom potion color. Custom potion color i'm going to use that as a as a way to target it as well let's give it one six oh five oh four three one the sort of a whitish color and let's just do that for now done and here i'm going to put a little block that's going to check for a cloud check cloud and we're simply going to say this is just for debugging purposes, so we know we've got the cloud. Um, what should we do? Execute at any entity type equals area effect cloud. Uh, we could do particles. Why would we just say something? Run, say hi. There we go. If there's a cloud anywhere around, it's going to start shouting out hi. Now give ourselves a potion and throw it. No cloud. Okay, so we're going to have to give it some custom potion effects. Custom potion effects. It's a list, so we'll have square brackets and we'll have one. Um, we're going to be killing this area effect cloud instantly anyway, so ID, to start at the beginning, one. Amplifier, um, I don't suppose it really matters. Let's do zero and duration. Again, I don't suppose it really matters since we're going to kill it. Let's just say one. Okay, done. Let's throw that. Uh, nothing happened at all. That's wonderful because we threw the same one. Let's get ourselves another one. There we go. And there's our cloud. So we've definitely got a cloud. Okay, kill any entity type equals area effect cloud. Right, we don't need you anymore. We know this is creating a cloud. Let's get rid of those. Now we're going to want... A controller. Okay. Boink. I will pop that down and we'll say controller. Now in the description I've got a few different controllers. This one will be under no link. Well actually this is going to be a test. This you'll see why shortly. Because we're gonna to have to make some changes to this. Okay, let's make it repeating. And we're just gonna execute um, at any entity whose type equals area effect cloud and mbt equals and this is why we gave it a custom potion color but we're just going to say color 16050431 and we will run well let's just do set block for now as a test set block at those location uh white wool are done now we're still going to have a cloud hanging around, so let's get rid of that cloud. Kill 
any entity type equals area effect cloud um, mbt equals color 1605.4.3.1. Done. Did I just put something weird in there? I did, didn't I? There we go. <laughs> Fingers just, I don't know what they're doing then. Okay, let's turn that on. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Let's copy this, control middle mouse, and put it over there. It's part of our reset, but we don't want to reset yet. So instead of just summoning a block, we could summon the cobweb, but then it's always going to be exactly where the potion lands. Let's make it a bit more interesting. So what we're going to do is instead, we're going to summon a marker. Cancel. Here. So instead of setting block, let's summon a marker at those coordinates. Uh, tags. Web. Let's see the whole command. There we go. Tags equals web. So we've got a marker. Done. And now let's randomize it a bit. Let's spread the marker. So we'll use spread players. We will execute as any entity type equals marker tag equals web run the spread players where you are uh, spread distance of at least one maximum range i don't know let's say two <clears throat> we don't have teams so false at s okay so that's going to place a marker down and then move it a little bit done and then what we'll do is we'll summon the, the cobweb at the marker so execute I think we can just do at. Well, better put entity type equals marker, tag equals web, if block there is air. Uh, that seems okay. Run set block there to cob web. Okay. Done. But now we're left with a marker and the area effect cloud. Well, we've got this block here, which kills the area effect cloud. So let's control middle mouse, put that back on the end. And now let's kill that marker. Kill any entity whose type equals marker, whose tag equals web. Done. So that should randomize it a little bit. Or a lot. What's it doing over there? I wouldn't expect it to be that far away. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay, if we put some crazy numbers, let's have a look at our spread players command. Not that one. This one. Uh, one, two. Well, they don't seem too bad. Ah, okay. What we've done is we're executing as the marker, tag web, but not at the marker. So we're actually executing at this command block. Well, that's an easy fix. At S. There we go. So now as the marker, at the marker. Cool. So just a little bit more random now. There we go. Now, here's a problem we're going to have with this is spread players likes to look for the highest block. Now there's no blocks above me. So spread players is putting it on the floor. If, on the other hand, let's just pillar up a bit. And we'll make ourselves a little platform up here. Okay, let's do it a bit of a quicker way. Let's um, use weld edit. Set gray wool. Okay, so we've got a platform. So we throw it. What's going to happen? We throw it. It creates the marker. It spreads the marker. The marker moves randomly a little bit. And then it looks up and it finds that platform and it's going to move the marker up onto the platform and then make the cobweb. So our cobweb's now up here. Hmm. We're going to have to move the cobweb back down. Now, in the sprinkler episode we did, episode 317, we were linking the, the area effect clouds to the sprinkler. 
because you might have more than one sprinkler in the world at a time. So I set that system up first and then realized maybe it's a bit complicated. We're only going to have one of these clouds at once, usually. But the commands for that are in the description. They'll be under controller linked, so you can look at that if you want. I'm going to do a simpler version now. Um, we're just going to assume there's only one area effect cloud. So somewhere in here, let's take off this end bit. What have we got here? Cobweb. So before we place the cobweb, we need to move that marker back down to the same level as the area effect cloud. So let's do one, two, three, control middle mouse. And we'll just make a gap in there like that. And here we want a new block. Let's get rid of those three. And this is where we're going to move it back down again. So let's execute as any entity whose type equals marker, whose tag equals web. So we're executing as the marker, not at the marker. We're going to be positioned as any entity whose type equals area effect cloud mbt equals, and we've only got one of them, uh, we're checking its color, uh, 1605.0431. Okay, so we're executing as the marker at the one area effect cloud that exists. Run data modify entity. We put at S, so that's the marker. Its position, Y, so number one. And we'll set that from an entity, any entity whose type equals area effect. I see that mistake, cloud. Now remember we're executing this command at the area effect cloud already, and we're checking its color. So here we could just do distance equals less than 0 0.1. We can take out that zero, and we can put limit equals one. Now we want to get its position one. Done. So what it's going to do, what is it going to do? Right. So it summons the marker. It spreads the marker. The marker jumps up there. Then we're going to look. We're going to execute as that marker positioned as this area effect cloud. And we're basically going to bring it down to the same Y level. That is what we're hoping is going to happen. Is it turned on? It is. Let's throw this underneath the platform. That seems to work. Cool. So the marker's appearing moving a little bit, jumping up there, then it's coming back down to the same wide level, and then we're killing everything. Okay, does it work up here? Yeah, cool, problem solved. Right, let's make some extra changes. I think we'll change this now. We'll say controller, and I'm gonna call it no link, because that's what I'll call it in the description, because we have the linked one, which we're not doing, but you can copy that if you want. So, we've only got one We've only got one cobweb appearing. That's not that exciting. Let's do a way to get more cobwebs. So easiest way, I think, let's take this and we will just, we'll just take off the end. How many cobwebs do we have? Let's have three cobwebs. Okay, let's copy that actually. We'll just copy the whole lot. Controller. Let's say multi-web. I won't put these commands in the description because they're going to be exactly the same as these. The only difference is we're going to copy this block. So that summons a marker. Okay, control middle mouse. Always active chain. That's two markers. Control middle mouse. That's three markers. Right, so we should have three cobwebs. Let's clear that. Let's copy these. One, two, three, four, five. And let's put them on the end. So we're doing exactly the same thing, but we're summoning three markers at the beginning instead. Let's turn that on, get one of them, throw that. Now we've got three cobwebs. Nice. Okay, now in the episode where we made the wandering beekeeper, we summoned three bees in one command. Uh, that could be interesting. Um, I won't do that now. If you're interested in that, I'll put a link in the description. It's episode 316, which is called First Attempt at Wandering Beekeeper. You can go and have a look at that if you want. But let's do a different way 
of summoning lots of um or a controllable amount of webs how should we do it i think what we could do is we have a marker entity so let's uh summon what should we call this uh let's call it a, a counter marker we're going to use this as a count let's put it in there and let's just summon marker inside the command block is fine doesn't matter where we summon this as long as it's in loaded chunks it has to be in loaded chunks um tags bom, bom, bom. what should we call it i suppose counter count counter will do counter okay bom. so we've got one and i'll put let's do a kill so we can do some testing if we want to kill Kill any entity whose tag equals counter. Okay, so we should only have one of them at the moment. Let's change this command. So we're keeping everything, everything's going to stay the same. We're just going to change this first command here. So this is the command that's summoning a marker. So execute at the area effect cloud. That seems good. Uh, run summon a marker. Okay. Now here, let's add some extra stuff. We're going to summon at the area effect cloud, but we're going to summon as any entity type equals marker tag equals counter. So what it's going to do, it's going to go to the cloud and then it's going to find our one counter and summon one cobweb. Okay, that seemed to work. I was always anxious <laughs> let's try again seem to work right we've got one let's bump press that now we've got two aha we've got two cobwebs cool let's do it again now we've got three we've got three cobwebs let's do it again now we've got four this is... oh we've only got three so i'm guessing a couple of them might be sitting on top of each other there yeah, we've got four that time. So sometimes they sit on top of each other. You can play with the numbers if you want. I think we're pretty much done now, though. Um, so what number are we using here? Spread players. Uh, here we go. So you can spread them further if you want. Spread them by two. Max range, I don't know, five. What happens now? Oh, big spread. Now, it's not very good if you want to catch someone, though. So you're a bit too large there. You want to probably want to keep those numbers relatively low. Anyway, there we go. We've been playing around. We've made a potion of webs. Um, you can throw your little... Boom. Oh, we've got four. There we go. I think that I think that is too high. Let's drop that down. I think if we drop it down to zero, just spread them by two. Now, I think you might have the overlap scenario here. Oh, we did get... Yeah, that's a bit better though, isn't it? Let's do one, two three so now we've got seven of them okay so a lot of them on top of each other we've got five that time i, I kind of like that it's quite nice to have a random amount there we go cool we have made a potion of webs um and detecting where a potion lands which was the easy bit since we're just looking for the area effect cloud that is created by our uh, our lingering potion anyway I've probably kept you long enough. Make with that what you will. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.